We are live, man. I see it. Hey. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, welcome to uh, welcome to a radical hangout. Thank you. Thank you for having me, though. No, man. You know, it's uh, it was crazy. I was kind of going through all the hashtags uh, on Bacardi Legacy 2019, and there's so many names. You know, there's there's so many different people from so many different places. And one thing that, that really drew me to uh, to your um, Instagram page is the logo. You like and the, it? it? Yeah, man. And, and the name, you know, it was one of those things that really caught my eye. I tried to, you know, when I was naming my when I was naming my drink, uh, I wanted to stay away from the Spanish names. Yeah, me too. You know, and for some reason, I gravitate to those who are also kind of on, on that uh, subconscious path as well. Um, so, I mean, tell me, man, like, why envious? Well, it was really difficult because, first off, when they started with the comment, my bar, you know, do Bacardi Legacy, do Bacardi Legacy. And I was like, no, man, I'm not good enough to do Bacardi Legacy. I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do? All these legends are competing. And then why would I try? I'm just bartending for, like, yeah, for really serious on cocktails for, like, three years. And then I was thinking about what do I want to do? And I, I wanted to do something that was um, different, but also, yeah, it's available for everyone. And I was thinking about my little sister. She's like 16 and she is like a big fan of a lot of people who are like fake, you know, like the fake hair, fake lips, fake everything. Everything's fake, they're not talented. They don't have anything to be like jealous about. And I was thinking about jealousy. That's a, that's a big thing right now because every single person in the world is jealous. Uh, if you say you're not, you're lying because everyone's jealous about something. Yeah. And I was thinking about what can I do with it? What can I do with it? And I was thinking about envy. And I was like, oh my God, envious. Everyone is envious. And that's why I was like, but what am I going to do with the drink then if I want something that's going to be, be different? So yeah, I was thinking about redefining stuff, you know, like vegetables and uh, other things or flowers. You wouldn't even try to consider to drink and then make it something else to drink. And that's why it was like envious, redefining things. Instead of saying you're jealous about something, be like, okay, I'm jealous. What am I going to do about it? I'm yes. going to work hard for it. So yeah, that was kind of the, the whole idea about my drink, redefining things we, we know right now. And instead of saying it's a negative thing, see it as a positive thing. I mean, that... that that, that's one thing that amazes me. As, a, as I mean, this is the first time that I've ever really kind of uh, delved deep into legacy. And, you know, I've done world class and I've done bowls and Monin and, and, and these things before, but legacy is on this whole different uh, kind of war path. You know, the stories that, I, that I'm listening to, the stories that I'm reading and seeing every day, and we and we live on social media, man, don't we? I mean, we, we, we're, we're on Instagram for it. It feels like 12 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 I think the, the stories that stick out to me the most are the ones that they, they feel more left of center. They're the ones that don't focus so much on the history of Bacardi. They focus on 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 future on future aspects or abstract aspects that don't really relate to what rum is. Yeah. And and that's for me. I think that's that's so so interesting, so exciting. You know because. For me, in uh, in my drink, I don't really reference the rum or the history of Bacardi uh, at all, really. No, yeah. Because you think about it, Legacy is now in its 11th year. They get thousands of, of entries every year. And how many of those people are constantly saying, well, Bacardi was founded in this, in, you know, in this year by this person, and, and, and it must get so tiring. Yeah, especially for the judges, I think. They hear the same story every single time. But also, yeah. it's like, we already know, don't go, no, yeah, 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 give us something new. That's also yeah. one of the best they told us, you know, if you're going to do something, do something new. Otherwise, you're not going to stand out. And it's, it's hard. It's hard to be uh, on, that, on that cutting edge, or it's hard to be uh, that person that creates something new. And one, one thing that, um, that my Swedish rep told me, and I think that it's useful um, for everyone that, that's either A, listening to this, or if it's just you and I, uh, he told me, he's like, don't make it a twist. 
the second the second that you t- that you say that your drink is a twist on something, you're completely downgrading what like what you do, and and that like that really resonated with me. I thought to myself, how often? And I've watched hours of Legacy online, and so many people say, you know, it's a twist on a daiquiri. Yeah. Right? And we, we, you know, we, we go to bars all the time and when somebody makes it a, a banging drink and you ask them, hey, man, like, what is that? And they say, oh, it's a twist on a daiquiri. I'm like, I can do a daiquiri, bro. Like, no, yeah. man, own it, own it. That, that's, that's you, that's you, and that's you in a glass. Uh, uh, and I don't know, it just kind of, you have this, this slogan, envy me, envy you, envy us. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought, I thought, I mean, that's, it's original. It's something that, that really stood out to me. And that's kind of, that's why, that's why I got into contact with you. And I'm super stoked that you, uh, that you hit me back. Nice, man. Yeah, this, the slogan was a funny thing, though, because, uh, yeah, you had a lot of drinks already on the internet named something with envy. And I was, and that's like, you don't want to be compared to, to those drinks, you know? I wanted to create something else, something new. And especially, it's not only a drink, it's a movement. So I was talking to my bar manager, who's a genius. It's like, his mind goes like 20, 100 miles an hour with creativity and stuff. And then I, I was like, yeah, but it's like envy me and then envy you. And he was like, oh, envy us. And I was like, oh my God, envy us, envy us, oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, crazy. I was like, at that point, I thought I was like Albert Einstein, you know? I was like, I was, I was smart. I was the smartest one in the room. I walked around like this, like, Yoo-hoo! But yeah, he already made it up, but still. Just, you, just you, you, you wanted to call up the, the Bacardi family and just say, hey, man, let's not, even, let's not even bother with the competition. Just send me the check now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man, but the Bacardi thing is crazy. Don't, don't you have it that you wake up and you're like, oh, my God, I've got like a million things to do next to your other job. And then yeah. you've got also your, you have your family and stuff as well. And then the Bacardi is a full-time job. I asked my brand ambassador, dude, this is a full-time job. He said, no, it's kind of like part-time. He was lying. Of course, man. <laughs> you know, my 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 reps always tell me, you know, it's a marathon or a sprint. It's a marathon or a sprint. I feel like I tell them, dude, I'm sprinting this marathon. <laughs> <laughs> I sprinting like two marathons. It's crazy every yeah. single day. And, and and the thing is, you know, as bartenders, we we kind of we put ourselves in these positions of it's positive stress. You know. I, Every day, I, I, I was just talking to, to the guy in, uh, in Mumbai uh, with Misbah, and I said to him, you know, I log on, the first thing I do in the morning, I kiss my boys good morning, kiss my girl, and then bam, on, I'm on Instagram. Yeah. And, and, and I'm constantly like, all right, you know, what's Ray doing? You know, what's she posting? What's Misbah posting? What, what's Migrahoon posting? Like, what are these guys doing that I'm not doing? And I feel like if I'm missing, if I'm missing – a couple of hours or a couple of posts or if I'm not kind of in Swedish say holla me if I'm not hanging with you know it's almost like well the last three months has, have been a waste. Yeah but you need some time for yourself as well. I, I I realized that I realized that like two days ago I went to London for the for the guest ship and then I was there and I was the only thing I was thinking about was I'm so tired but I had so much much things to do and I couldn't get my mind straight anymore that it was like okay you know for one day just no bartending, no parties, nothing. Don't go in bars, do nothing. Just do something fun, you know? And so I went out with my sister. I went to see Harry Potter. It was amazing. But, yeah, it was, you know, you're busy with something else. And then when I came back, I, I felt like I was, like, the battery was charged again so I could go full. And then you see on Instagram that you miss, like, oh, my God, my competitors did, like, 200 things in one day. And I was like, oh, my God, dude, I have to run. And then my sister was like, no. You already, you, no, you got this. No worry. And then you got your mind straight, you know? Yeah, yeah. With this competition, you need people who support you. If you don't have a good support system, even if it's your bar or your family or your friends, doesn't matter, or your dog, I don't care what it is, you need some, something or someone who's supporting you. Otherwise, it's... Yeah. I mean, yeah, it really did. And, and you know the thing is, like, you're constantly comparing yourself with with your global peers. I mean, like, there's two dudes that stick out to me the most: mm-hmm. Photon over in um, Belarus mm-hmm. and uh, Pinocho in Portugal. I mean, and these dudes are everywhere. 
you know, like they're they're having guest shifts in Russia. They ha- they, you know, they're in Spain. They're in London. They're everywhere. They're everywhere online. Their drinks are on all these menus. And and I think to myself, oh my god, I'm so far behind. And I look at, I look at my body of work, and I think, well, you know, I must be. It, it feels like you're in this invisible race. Yeah. Right. Right. You don't really see your competitors, but they're there. Yeah, and and I, and I think it's difficult because for me in Sweden, uh, we live in a black market, right? So we can't advertise alcohol. Uh, we we can't give out samples. Um, we can't give out cheap alcohol or cheap cocktails. Um, so we're really we're really limited into into what we can do, and. You know, to compound it, I I don't live in Stockholm. I live two hours south of Stockholm. I live in a in a tiny little village. That's it's crazy. Even more difficult then. Yeah, it, it it really is, man. And that that was kind of what prompted me to do these uh, these online hangouts. Uh, I thought to myself, okay, well, how am I going to use my disadvantage as, as an advantage? Well, you know, an advantage of mine is technology. Uh, the disadvantage is I don't have access to millions of people around me. So I was like, well, I'll make I'll make the access, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, and with, you know, with every person that I meet, I'll ask them, "Hey, dude, like for a weekend, can you throw my drink on on a, on a chalkboard?" And people yeah. are like, you know, hell yeah, man, I I can hook you up. And if I sell two or three, I'll let you know and add that to your tally. And it, it just builds, you know. It, it means I don't have the I think one of the questions I wanted to ask you was the challenges that you found um, or that you're finding doing this. And I know for myself, I'm a father, you know, I run a bar and yeah, I've got, uh, I've got all these things going on. I tutor in English. You know? oh. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it's a hectic life. And then you throw a legacy on top of that and you're, you're constantly comparing yourself with, well, I'm not doing any guest shifts at the moment. Like why aren't I going to Spain? Why aren't I, doing this and doing that and I, and I think that can be really stressful for especially for young bartenders and so it's, it's difficult because you can't you know it's like it's not necessary to do a million gushing you can do a thousand but if your drink is not compatible or your story is not compatible you can have a million sales that doesn't matter it's about the the, the story behind your drink and is your drink compatible to who you are and to who you are promoting for. Yeah. You know, so even if you have uh, someone who has a, a thousand gas shifts and flying all over the world, doesn't mean he has to win. Last year there were there was someone in the in the top yeah the top watcher I think and he had like 20, 10,000 sales. Yeah, really cool, but it doesn't mean you're gonna win or something. It's, it's good for you, it's good for Bacardi as well, and it's nice, but it doesn't say anything. Yeah. Especially in Amsterdam and in the Netherlands, we're so small, we know everyone. It's like you just walk in a bar and you know the head bartender, you know a bartender, you know the bar manager or owner. It's crazy, it's like, and still though, people don't wanna help you though. It's like- hey, yeah, Really? Yeah, people okay, man, you know. No, 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 no. We, we we don't list. We don't list. We don't list. So then you say, okay, then I will do a training or a guest shift. And a guest shift is always easy, especially when they know you're a, ca- a capable bartender, because then it's like free free labor, also free promo for them. But listing is it's not that easy as it looks. No, man. No, it, and, and, and that that's a huge thing. I'm so stoked that you brought that up. Like, you have to almost conquer this um this barrier of asking people first. Like, hey man, can I invade in in your space? <laughs> yeah. You know, and and, and 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 that's kind of awkward. And then also, if you're if you're kind of encroaching with, with these guest shifts, part of me because I've got a couple of guest shifts lined up uh, down south. I've got some in Stockholm, and I've got some locally around. But for me, I think to myself, like, what gives me the right to do this? I don't know if you've ever felt that when you're standing there and people are looking at you, and you think to yourself, like. Oh man, I, I'm 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 in such a brand new uh, position in, in the situation that it feels so foreign, and, and people are looking up to you because they, they think they think well. Yeah, they, well, they think you're really good. <laughs> they think you're really amazing. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, like you have to pat yourself on the back and say like, okay, I've earned this. I worked hard. I was dedicated. I trained. You know, like everything, every 
all top three um, competitors in, in each country, we're, we're in the top three for a reason, yeah. right? But in the same time, we're just making a drink. <laughs> you know? And that's why I think the story is so much more important. Yeah. The, the, the story is for me, that that's, that's, the, that's the sales tool. Not the drink itself, I mean, any monkey can make a drink. True. Right? And anyone can make you know, special syrups and shrubs and brews and, and whatever else you want to call it. But it's, it's how you present yourself and, and what story are you sharing? What are you, how are you connecting with people? Yeah. And, you know, that was the basis for Cubist. You know, I wanted to, I like weird things. I like weird art. I like weird music. And I like perspective. I think that every, everyone holds this, this, uh, this ability to see the world in a really unique uh, way through their perspectives based off their own experiences. And my drink is super simple. I mean, my drink is just honey water, lemon juice, Prosecco, Carta Blanca, uh, and pasty, and a little bit of um, uh, vermouth. I mean, anyone can make that, right? Yeah. And I know that my strength isn't the drink. I know my strength is my story. And, and it's relatable. It's something that people can grasp onto. They can take it. They can run with it. Uh, and that they get to adapt it and they get to move with it in their own way. Yeah, they can make it their own. Yeah, and and I think it's for anyone that's listening to this. I, I think that's a it's a really key thing if you're going to get into into legacy and going to get into, uh, especially bartending competing. You know, don't don't get hung up on the drink. You know, you should get hung up on the story, and and a good drink should be consequence of a fantastic story. Yeah, yeah, but I know amazing bartenders who can like make drinks that are like that you will think that you're drinking liquid gold but they can socialize for shit sorry for my language but if, when you're sitting at their bar they're boring and bartending is not only making good drinks because everyone can make a classic when you're working in the cocktail bar i expect that you can make a few classics so when you're not like you don't have to entertain me you don't have to be a clown yourself as well, a little bit of passion, but yeah. that's what you said, like the, the story behind the drink and and the reason why you created the drink, I think is one of the most important things as well, because yeah, it's, it's also one of the most difficult things, I think. Yeah, so. You know, to, to, to create something that's your own, but you don't want to assume other people are liking that as well. Yeah, I don't know really how to explain it, but if you're making like uh, if you're making a drink and it's like you know rum and lime go get back to the age of time, you know pirates stuff like that and everything. So that's the first thing you think about when you think about Bacardi. You know, okay, what I'm gonna do? Okay, Bacardi, lime, and it's then you want it to be different. But how are you gonna combine a story with being different? Something that eleven years in eleven years, you know how many bartenders, <laughs> how many yeah. stories, how many different things, and you have to be different. There yeah. are billions of people in the world, and you have to be that one different person. It's difficult, man. It's a pressure. It's a pressure. I think for yourself as well. It, it, but it drives you, you know. Another thing I wanted to ask is: is how much does working and living in Amsterdam, how much does that affect you and influence your, your ability to, to, to move your legacy forward? And, and does it play a role? You know, if we switched positions, if you lived here in Nora Shopping, a population of 100,000 people, you know, w would you still be able to produce, you know, what, you, what you're producing at the moment? Well, I, I, I think I would because I'm really a social person. I don't mind stepping up to people, talking to people, ask people if I don't know something or I want, I want something, I just ask for it. And if it's no, yeah, it's no, but yeah, you have no, you know, yes, you can get, but answer is always no, but you can have a yes. So I think I would do it in a different way as well, because yeah, Amsterdam is like, a, it's a small, really small village. So I'm like, it's what I said, everyone knows each other. I don't know how it's, how it's there in Sweden. I've never been there, but I, I think, yeah. I think I could, but I don't know exactly what I would do. Yeah. yeah you know, like you reaching out to way more people doing these hangouts because I also on my private uh, Facebook, I've got almost 3000 followers. 
So it's like, if I post this, you also get that. Yeah, yeah. So it's amazing because you just, you yeah, it's, it's yeah, it, yeah, it's venting. You know, I find, uh, I find look because I'm from Sydney originally. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you hear my voice. Yeah, I heard yeah. that. I was like, dude, Sweden, huh? <laughs> People get that all the time because like, I, I don't. I don't say that I'm an Aussie on my Instagram. So when uh, when I meet them face to face, they're like, huh? Is that, <laughs> and, you know, especially when when people from India, for example, they say like, is that how Swedes sound? <laughs> And I'm like no, dude. You know, I'm an Aussie. My girl, she's Swedish, and uh, it, and she was missing. Yeah, she was missing home, and uh, it was time to start a family. So, so we moved here, and I thought to myself, okay, well, that's that's the bartending dream gone now. Yeah. <laughs> like, what am I gonna What am I gonna do in a, in a small village? But uh, but you make it work. You know, I I think you you, you you're a product of your environment. And I think you should embrace that. I don't think you should be anyone that you, who you're not, and you shouldn't reach out and and, and, and try to. Co- I can't copy what you do, and I can't copy what the guys in London do. You know, I can't. I I don't have the ability to go out and guest shift. I don't have the ability to to go to world class bars in my town uh, and, and and rely on them. So you have to make it work for yourself. And I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of pride in that. And yeah, it, it's challenging, but it's so it's so fun, man. I mean, as stressful as this thing is, uh, like I said, I've got sixty people lined up to do these hangouts, and each person that I speak to, I'm like, hey, dude, like that's a new friend, and yeah. and it, it's such, it's such a cool feeling. I mean, we're in Europe, and so it's quite easy for us to travel down. And I'm like, hey, if I'm ever in Amsterdam with my family, and I go get a coffee with Ray, yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, there's also what the I, I had a chat with the last Bacardi Legacy winner, the global winner, Eric. He's from yeah. that, and so of course I'm I'm gonna I'm like, dude, uh, how did you felt about this and how you felt about that? And he was like, I just, even though it was a competition and you're competing against everyone, you're making friends. He, he made friends that he's still friends with. It's like for a lifetime. Every time, it doesn't matter which country he goes, he knows people, and it's something that um, how you say it. You you grow, you know. Yeah. You learn not only from the people around you in in your environment, but you learn from like everyone. And I think that, that this is the most beautiful part about Bacardi Legacy, and that's also the thing that everyone's talking about is the family you create. Because Bacardi is not just a, a competition or a brand; it's it's a family that you you create uh, with people, but also uh, yeah, with the environment, the people you reach out to. And Absolutely. Yeah, beautiful things of a competition because I did I did, I did a few competitions and uh, I did I did okay I did okay I'm I'm not I'm not really amazing yeah I, I did okay <laughs> but it's like I've never met that many bartenders or new bartenders um, from the Netherlands but also from other countries because yeah in the Netherlands we have bartenders from Brazil we have uh, bartenders from Madrid. Uh, Sweden, uh, yeah, you name it, Finland. Everyone is like coming to the Netherlands as well. Romania. One of my, my one of my, my Mr. Miyagi is from Romania. He's one of the best bartenders I've ever met, and I'm so happy that I got to meet him. And that's what bartending does, and that's also what Bacardi does on a higher level. Yeah, absolutely, man. The marketing campaign is crazy. I'm not gonna lie, though. It's really like sometimes I'm just stressing out, like. Oh my god! I still don't have my stickers. Oh my god! I still don't have my pins. And then I'm like, dude, it's coming. Yeah. Relax. And then yeah. you have a shot, and then it's okay. I, th- I think that I think that's such an important thing uh, to share to people. You know, like at the end of the day, uh, there can only be one winner in the world, and the you always have to think positively, of course, and and you always have to hope and you have to dream. Uh, but let's say the percentages aren't in your favor as, as individuals, they're not in our favor. Right. So I think to myself, I'm like, okay, if I don't win this, but I managed to go to globals, what do I take out? from it? Amazing. Uh, you know, and, and uh, one thing that I kept on drawing back to was this, this thing that you mentioned was the Bacardi family. And I wanted to find out for myself if this was a, if this was a true thing or if this was just another marketing ploy by a company. But the more people that I talk to, 
that, that are associated with legacy, the more people are so open to, to share. You know, you said you spoke with Eric. Uh, yeah. I, I spoke with Ran, uh, who won a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hit him up on, on Instagram. And I just wrote a message and I'm like, hey, dude, can, can, can I ask you some questions about legacy? And within four minutes, he wrote me back and he's like, of course, how can I help you? I'm like, fuck. I mean, yeah, he's got, he has no purpose uh, writing back to me. And then, uh, you know, you know uh, Mo mm -hmm. from, uh, uh, you know, Mo, Mo he's, uh, he was competing for Norway uh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, two years ago. Uh, he finished in top three two years ago, and I sent him a message. Uh, he's the owner of Two Schmucks. Yeah, that's what I said, in Barcelona, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I sent him a message, and I'm like, hey, dude, can I ask you a couple of questions? And yeah. he's like, absolutely, hit me up. And I just thought to myself, what, what, an, what an amazing feeling. You know, what an amazing community of people who are all against, they're all fighting against the odds. Yeah. But, but everyone is so willing to help each other. And like you said, you know, like you throwing it out on, on your on your Facebook page, that helps me, you know, uh, and, and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful to be able to, you know, to do this and to invite you into, into something that I'm doing and and push it on my end. And that helps you and that that promotes your drink. And I mean, there, there's no room for, for selfish bartenders in this. There's no there's no room for people to be mean and uh and vindictive and, and kind of backstabby because it doesn't do any any anyone any good. No, but it's not good for them as well because you, you can see the bartenders who are too um, on themselves, you know, only thinking about their dream, their marketing campaign, their legacy, their thing, their thing. And you see that they don't really, you see them, but you don't, you know, yeah. they don't catch it. And I've, I've spoken to a few of the like finalists of, uh, of, of Finland, uh, of, of a few, a few guys as well, and it's like they hit me up, and I was like, "Oh, we can do that." I was like, "Oh, this, oh it doesn't matter. Okay, you're not mad if I ask you something, or oh, you don't yeah. mind." And it's like, yeah, it's 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 a journey. It's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful journey to walk at, but uh, it's also, it's also, I think I, lo I I lost like two pounds already. <laughs> Because I have a full time job. I had a full time and a part time job, and now I have like two full times, yeah. one part time. And it's like I just left the office, and then normally on Fridays I have um, bartending as well. And then on Saturdays I have, I have the during the day I've got the training and stuff like that. And then I've got bartending as well on Sunday. It's, it's, it's full on, man. Family, man. How are you doing yeah. this? How are you still alive? I don't know. Bro, you you know you know what it is. Make sure she's not uh <laughs> listening. <laughs> no, I, you know I, I've got I've got an amazing girl, man. I really do. I mean, she's um, yeah, she she's super supportive of of everything that. You know, th this is a hobby at the end of the day. You know, like what we're doing right now, it starts off as a hobby, and. The further you progress, the more that it can alter your life, and and this competition can truly alter your life. Whether, whether you win or you know, it, it it's mind blowing, and uh, and she she sees how uh, how much effort and how much dedication I'm putting into this, and uh, yeah, yeah, she's really. I, I think a, another piece of advice for anyone is, hey man, you've got to have a support, a a, a really good support network, yeah, because because like like we've mentioned a few times. It's hard, and and it is a full time job. And if you and if you are being serious, and if you are taking it uh, and holding it with the respect that it, that it deserves and that it needs, you should be stressed. Yeah. But but I think that there's a that there's a difference. And there's also a correlation between positive stress and negative stress. And if you're positively stressed, and and I'm thinking, fuck, like what's Ray doing? You know, I, I want to be on her level. And that's a positive stress yeah. because it because it drives you forward. And if I didn't have her support and if I didn't have support of friends and, uh, you know, your guys' support as well, um, then I couldn't do this. I really, I really couldn't. You know, I, I've got two, two. It's a positive thing. And that's also the thing that I have with the envious, you know, with the redefining things. Instead of thinking, oh, my God, I'm stressed. That's negative. See it as something, okay, I'm stressed. What can I do now? How does it get better? 
you know, the hangouts, I think it's an amazing idea. And I was like directly thinking, dude, that's fucking amazing. Why didn't I think about that? And, and I'm like, okay, what can I do now to step my game up as well? You know, even though you don't have the the reach that you want to in, in Sweden, in, in your in your little village, or I don't know if it's a village or, or it's, a, it's, a, it's a village. <laughs> it's a village, okay. In, in your village, then you you still got something to reach out. And for me, that's like I've got a city. Yeah. You know? So what can I do to progress in, in, in that thing? So I think if we help each other out everyone then of course it's only one winner you know hunger games uh, everyone yeah well, but at the end it's something you take with you because i did a guest shift in london i did a guest shift at another bar tomorrow i have another training i'm meeting people in amsterdam that i see or did not see at all or did not know and that's only in amsterdam now I've got to meet you. I don't know yeah. Swedish people. Never. Yeah. I've got one good friend who's you, Australian, but I don't know. Bro, you still don't know a Swedish person, man. <laughs> but you're kind of living there, though. I, no, no, you know, I, I was born in Sydney and I, I grew up in Lima. Oh, uh, my God. I still don't know Swedish people. Oh, shit. It's not. Well, <laughs> Sorry, but you, you know an Aussie. Throw it away. But, but you, know, you, you know an Aussie. I'm sleeping with a Swede, if that oh, counts. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's like 50%, though. <laughs> hey, hey, that's all you that's all you can get right now. Yeah, man, but it doesn't matter, right? Because I've got a we had people uh in the Topocho in the Netherlands who were also not from the Netherlands. No, and, and that was a you know, I another thing I would suggest to people is you have to go to these uh to these Bacardi seminars, right? Because when when I went to the seminar in Stockholm, uh I asked um now my ambassador, but I asked him you know, how much does my location play a role in my selection? It, you know, like how, how, how much does it influence your, pers your perspective of who I am? The fact that I come from a village that only basically just got internet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he, he was, he was brutal. He was, you know, he was brutally honest. And he told me, yeah, like it, it plays a role because we have to think about market size, but if you're personable enough, and if your drink is on point, and if everything is where it needs to be, I mean, you could be on the mood for all they care. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll put the drink in. Uh, it made top eight, and I thought, okay, like he's keeping his word. Uh, and then I made. Then they came down. They 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 tried the whole drinks and they saw the presentations. And then I made top three, and he he gave me some really amazing feedback. And, and he told me he's like, it doesn't matter if you were if you only had three people in your village. Like your story was on point, your idea and and your and your relationship to the brand was fantastic. Your presentation was great, and the drink was super tasty. And he's like, "That's what a legacy is." Yeah, I agree. You know, and and, and that kind of fortified my, my my belief in. I mean, I've, I've I've got belief in myself, but that fortified my belief in my drink. And I was like, "Hey, dude, I can go from Sydney, one of the capitals of the world." I can be working in these world-class bars. I can now live in this tiny little village and I can still do what I do if I do it with enough passion, if I do it with, you know, organized and scheduled work. And that's another thing. I think I think if people are listening to this, you have to be organized. You have to have schedules and you have to have you have to have deadlines and dates. You know, there's I've got this app. Uh, what's it called? I don't know if you can see it. Maybe Which not. one? Yeah, it's my little boy. It's Kingston. But <laughs> it, it, it's called uh, it's called Sked. 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 Yeah. But what, what Sked is is it schedules all my Instagram posts. Oh man, I'm gonna download that as well. I just have a clock. <laughs> no, bro. Get get Sked. Sked does um, what it does is I, I put like thirty posts in. I oh. set. You I set, already post everything and they just post it for you? Yeah, so I set all I set all the date I set all the dates, I set all my tags, I set everything, and then I just hit go and then it just bam posts like whenever the whenever the, the time was set. Oh my god, that's amazing. I'm gonna download that shit. Uh, so there you go. We're learning something. Oh I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make a picture for Instagram though. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Thank you.
Hey man, do you have a bottle of uh, Carta Blanca or anything over there? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, even, I even got, look, I've got cards. Hey, let me get, let me get a little photo there too. And I got stickers. Look at you, hang on, stay right there, man. <laughs> you even got this, look. <laughs> Three. Three, say something. Hey, <laughs> how you doing, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, man. Oh, hey, man, let's wow. let's, uh, let's take a little shot together, huh? Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna get a new glass because I already I'm already started drinking like really bad, but I really needed it after my day. Let's see if I can get some uh, some filming on this. Okay. Wait, wait. Oh, I'm gonna do the bottle. I'm gonna do the. I, I, I like that you're uh, using the bottle cap as a responsible drinking. Not too much. Here we go. Well, Here. cheers. Great. It's an absolute pleasure, homie. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Oh, I, I was doing a good job, man. So, how come you're using Quattro? Um, I was, I wanted something that was a little bit more sweeter with the vanilla and the cloves and the honey inside the Quattro. I didn't have to add a lot of extra sugars, uh, because I'm using endive. That's a vegetable. That's a bitter. And I'm using peju. That's the, the juice of unripe grapes. That's really sour. And I wanted to add something that's not only like, or a vanilla syrup or something else, or maple or you know almond a lot of those syrups i'm going to do something a little bit different with less sugar you know i added sugar though but you really have the taste in the drink of the bacardi quattro it really comes forward with the sweetness it really compares well with the endive and the fergie and i tried the ocho as well and the ocho was a little bit too heavy for the comparison of the other ingredients and the blanca was fading away in the drink. And I wanted to be the, yeah, I wanted to be the queen of the drink. You know, when you taste it, I want you to taste and feel the Bacardi. And with Quattro, it was like really out there. And I was like, yeah, this is it. And I like it as well for a uh, for, for decorative or like everything. Is. Yeah, it, and it, it's the first year that Quattro has been uh, entered in. So it kind of it, it came, kind of came at the, at the perfect time for you, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, everything kind of li aligning up and yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, you know, I I tried I tried everything uh, inside Cubist, and at first I, I wanted to use Quattro as well because uh, Quattro and Champagne works fantastically together, uh, and 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 I really I was like pushing it, yeah, you know, and, and I was pushing it way too hard, uh, and so I think for people, if you if you're gonna make uh, especially a, a legacy drink, don't be married to to one product. Yeah, you know because. Part of me felt like, oh, I don't want to use Carta Blanca. It feels too, it feels, uh, you know, not not uh, not bold enough. Yeah. And, and for for the longest time, I wasn't paying it the respect that it needed. But it, ha yeah, but Blanca is like you can. It's crazy what you can do with the with, with white rum only. Yeah, man, it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's. It's absolutely delicious, and, and and what it what it did for, for my drink was it kind of provided the canvas for everything else to to, to amalgamate and to, and to move around the blanca in a in a in a really subtle and unique kind of way, and you know blanca's got that really nice kind of earthy dry bite to it, yeah, and and so you know as much as I was resisting using it, it it it, it turned out to be the only option that could have made my drink work. Because I, I was so married to it, to all the other ingredients, and and I tried to to alter the adjustments and the measurements and everything, and it just wasn't it wasn't working. And then I said to myself, like, why am I getting hung up on on one Bacardi brand when <laughs> it's it was it's 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 been looking at me since I was sixteen years old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I was like, hey, you know, and and my motto it's uh, it's radical thinking. Yeah. 
And I'm like, okay, well, if, if I preach radical thinking and accessible drinking, then, uh, you know, I've, I've got about, it, yeah, you like that? I like it. <laughs> because, you know, the, the two guys I'm competing with in Sweden, they have, uh, they've got amazing drinks, um, but they, you have to do a little bit of work for their drink. You don't have to do uh, quite, a, quite a bit of prep. Uh, and I thought to myself, well, that's not my drink at all. I mean, I've, I've got a video series of just random people coming into my house and making uh, making the drink. Yeah. So I thought, I was like, okay, like the idea, the idea behind Cubist, it's uh, it's taking fragmentation, it's taking the Cubist movement from Picasso, uh, and and it's applying it to a drink, and it's applying it to how we see and how we enjoy art, because uh, through Cubism. We got surrealism and abstractionism, and we got we got all these isms that that formed and altered the world that we live in today. And none of it could have been possible without a blank canvas. And so, and you got this. I'm not gonna lie, but you got me. I just like, yeah, man. I like this story. It's perfect. And blank canvas and like, oh um, man. Yeah, man. you know, I was listening. Uh, I don't know if you know these this, this band. I was listening to this group called Hobo Johnson. No. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they've got this uh, this song called Peach Scone, uh, and this song, I mean, it's a weird song, you know? Hobo Johnson, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up, I want to hear it. Yeah, it's called Peach Scone by Hobo Johnson, and uh, and everyone that I show this song to, they hate it, man, they absolutely hate this song, and and I, I love it, I listen to it about six times a day. Young man, he's a writer, little writer boy, you call Is it him? <laughs> she back, but not really. They're just really good friends, and that's fine. He understands. It's rational. Hi, what's your name? How are you? Is this the song? Like, oh, you got a man. Are you in love? So tight. Is it just platonic, strictly just friends? Friends. Two friends. Is this the that's the this song. Is, that's the song, man. I understand why people don't like it, though. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 that's the point, you know. I, I find. I found so much enjoyment out of that song and I found that song so addictive and it when when I showed people especially my partner she's like what is this trash I mean this is rubbish <laughs> and that's what made me think well why do we see uh, how do we see enjoyment like who's to say what's right and what's wrong who's to say you know that what what is art and what isn't art and when you look at cubism it's very easy to disregard cubism as just random lines on a paper. But then when you analyze it and you take it away and you add your own perspectives to it, it, it becomes something that's, well, it's yours. And, and, and no one can take away that enjoyment from that piece of art in that moment. And so that song, uh, as much as you may hate it. <laughs> it's not that they don't like it. It's just like, I don't understand why your girlfriend saying, yeah, what is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it was, it's not my favorite. Let's just say that. Yeah, let's not be negative. It's not my favorite. <laughs> and, and, and you're right, you're proving my point. You're, pro <laughs> you're proving why, why cubism <laughs> and why cubism should be a legacy because it allows you to, it allows you to see perspective. Yeah. And and I spent months, dude, like trying to make this drink. And I was listening to this song hours a day. This one song. I, I at one point I listened to it about twenty times in a row. But maybe I maybe I need more drinks to listen to this. <laughs> it, it, Not that I don't like it, but I I, I think I need more Bacardi to appreciate <laughs> the the tunes that come out. Hey, hey dude. <laughs> Hey, do me do me a favor. Make 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 a cuba drink for me. Play peach scone and, 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 and <laughs> tell gonna me. Do it. I'm gonna do it in the bar. The night I'm gonna I'm gonna ho one night I'm gonna host your drink and I'm gonna make it special of the day and I'm gonna play this song. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, and I'm gonna film it for you as well. Please, yeah. please do, man. Please do. Yeah. 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 It, oh. it, it, it's so funny because because that reaction. I get the, this reaction all the time. People ask me, "Oh, like what an interesting, what an interesting concept behind the behind your cocktail? Where'd you get it from?" I'm like, "Hey, man, I got it from this trash song that everyone hates, but I absolutely adore." I think I'm gonna get fired if I play this. In <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, and I, I, I even reached out to Hobo Johnson, 
and uh and i hit them up on instagram and i was like hey dudes just so you know you know your uh your drink inspired my uh, your, your song inspired my cocktail they haven't got back to me yet but uh you have to gonna... spam them spam yeah. them send them another yeah. one and then when uh, they don't reply send them another one <laughs> yeah i mean I'm, I'm hitting them up i'm hitting them up all the time i'm like hey guys you know i, I i'm pushing your song around the world please like send me some love so yeah. Hobo, Hobo, Hobo Johnson, if you're listening, get at me, please. Please help this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he has a lot of a lot of um, plays though, a lot of streams, like eight million. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like uh, uh, that. That's what art. Art is is one of those those. It's it's an access point for people uh, to understand how how you feel and how you see the world, right? And I think part part of the artistry in that song is the fact that uh, the tune is off center and it is off key and it's very abstract and he forces you to listen to what he's saying and he's for, he's forcing you to see the misery in in this kind of upbeat happy tune if you when you can find the tune but <laughs> but you know he's he's forcing you to understand and to and to apply your own experience through his art and what it and once you break that barrier then then you then you understand kind of where 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 my drink is uh where my drink is setting yeah but i i saw the last i think it was the last one i have uh, the link on your on your instagram to the youtube i saw the with the guy i think it was the guy from mumbai um that you were talking about that you were an artist as well that you you studied art as well yeah what, when did you make like the switch um, I mean, I studied, I studied uh, a lot of things. I studied history. Uh, I, I'm an English major. Um, and I think I made the switch. I, I, got into, I got into bartending quite early, I think I was 17 or 18 years old. And I fell in love with it straight away. And I, don't, I never really made the switch from anything. I, I've, I've kind of been doing, uh, I've been doing both careers simultaneously. Nice. Uh, you know, and... You know, one of your questions was, okay, well, how do I do this, and and uh, how do I how do I balance family and work and careers and all these things together? And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't balance. But having a really supportive family uh, and having two career paths that I don't have to choose from, and and I find so much enjoyment in both. Uh, yeah, that that that's something that that I really try to keep focus and and and, and the center point. Sometimes it is too much. Oftentimes it is too much. Um, there's always always too much. I've never heard a bartender said, "Oh my god, I'm so relaxed, I'm so chill." <laughs> it's always yeah. stress because our job is stress. Being a bartender means you're like a million things. You're a scientist. You're an artist. A you're therapist. a therapist. Yeah, <laughs> you need to you need to be tough, but you need to love as well. But you yeah. need to be quick, but you also need to be kind. It's like you need to be everyone in one person it's really exhausting it's really exhausting but i love it but that's where you need outlets and 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 that's where that's where i find a lot of peace and art you know I, I can spend hours on 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 blogs just looking at different art you know uh i'm really into uh outsider art at the moment uh outsider art is art done by uh convicting criminals schizophrenics uh those with dementia um uh, Sandra, come, Sandra, come meet my new friend. Come here, <laughs> baby. I was just uh, Ray, and for anyone else who's watching, hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. I met a Swedish person. <laughs> hey, <laughs> am, I, am I your first? Yes, yes, yes. She's, she's in the <laughs> <laughs> in Amsterdam and done yeah. met a sweet. You gonna go grab the cookies in my mouth. I just mm -hmm. I, I just showed Ray um the song Peach Scone, the song that you really hate. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> I, I told I told you I got I got really weird taste in music. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's it's not bad, but it, it's not good either. <laughs> it's just not good. <laughs> Right. It, let's say it's in the middle. 
Sorry, I'm going for a shout. Nice to meet you. Bye, bye. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so there you go. That's uh, that's the bedrock of this household. Nice. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so outsider art. Um, I kind of got into this through Cubist, uh, the cocktail, actually, because the more I started researching uh, art and and art theory, it led me down this path. And it's if you ever get a couple of minutes, just give it a Google uh, outside uh, outsider art, and it's creepy, man. It's it's really creepy to see the perspective of a mad person. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if I really feel that though. But yeah, check it out. Check it out. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Okay. <laughs> Now we're talking about outside art. Outside art. Yeah, outside art, yeah. Outside. But I think, you know, another point for, for legacy is that you learn so much externally from, from what your center point actually was. You know, like my, my journey started off creating a drink centered around something that I was passionate about. And it's led me down, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing events at art, uh, at art shows. Uh, I'm working with the local art museum. I'm I'm working with local artists. Uh, I'm starting a fund uh, for artists in Sweden uh, to help promote their work. And it's all possible because it's something that uh, I truly found joy in. And I don't have the time in my personal life to go out and hang out with artists. But if I can find a way to to channel what I like doing externally with with my legacy. You know, I'm, I'm killing it five birds with one stone. True. And art is also the way how you percept things because I, I, I'm in contact now with a, with, with an artist as well who, who does a lot of paintings and stuff like that. I don't know if you know them, uh, Republicy. Um, they want to do something as well. And it's, they also have like amazing art things. And the thing with art is that everyone has their own flavor, but it reaches everyone. Even though you don't like it, you still look at it. Yeah, absolutely. You still think, why don't I like it? Or why do I like it? And it's, it's not only in, in painting or something. I also see music as an art. And I also see like like dancing as an art. For me, it's dance. I used to dance like like years back, but I was really good. Not anymore. I'm old now. But How old are you, Ray? No, I'm not old. I'm, tw I'm 26. But I, 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 bartending makes you like, yeah, yeah. you know, and sometimes I wake up and I just feel it in my back, you know. And I'm, like, <laughs> hey, man, I'm 29 and I've got the body of a 95 year old. <laughs> I think it gets me gray as well, bartending. Yeah, I got I got my first gray hair the other day. <laughs> for, for real, though. That's your legacy as well. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. but I really love the idea that you did the, the the Cubist thing with the art and that with the music. Even though I don't like it, I like it because I like your story. Yeah, and and and, and that that was that was a really cent the center point for me. You know, I I knew that inside my cocktail I have pasty, and I know pasty isn't it's not really an accessible uh, flavor for a lot of general people, and. I only use 2.5 mils of it. And I think, you know, an, an extra 0.5 mils and, and it, it would really kill the drink. Um, but I wanted I wanted something that represented something weird for, for people, something that will it's not it's not an air mail cocktail. Mm -hmm. Something that's really easy, light, you know, citrusy and but effervescent and bubbly. But it was something that that it makes you think and it makes you think of do I like that? Well, if I if I if I had that by itself, I wouldn't like that. But within this context and within this setting and within within this form of art artistry, it works. And and I like it because I like I like the drink, I like the presentation, I like the story, and I under, and I understand the concept of, of what uh, perspectives are and and what interpretation is. Cool. Man. I like the way you think. <laughs> hey, cheers, man. Yeah, I like the way you think. Good, 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 good. You, you're giving me ideas as well, so that's a good thing. Not the same as you, but like I'm, I'm thinking different. Like, you know, like yeah. But but that's what these hangouts should be. These hangouts, you know, if if a million people watch them or if two people watch them, uh, at the end of, at the end of the day, it's it's you and I, and, and we're sharing we're sharing what we're doing. And I'm taking away a lot from what you're saying. You know, uh, th the biggest thing that I took subconsciously is. Hey, like breathe, man. Yeah. You know, like, 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 take a step back. Like you said, you went out to a bar. Uh, you went out to uh, to the movies with your sister. 
you know, and, and I think that's that's one thing that I don't do enough. I don't I don't just I don't step back enough. Uh, and I, you know, these hangouts should be used as a as a forum for for aspiring bartenders and those who are doing legacy at the moment. You know, to take some to take some some knowledge from each other and say, well, I can use that and I can adapt that and I can take an idea that Andy's doing over in Sweden and I can readjust it and reformat it to fit me. And I can take, you know, what you're doing down in the Netherlands and not copy it, but make it my own. And, and I think that that's a, it's a really positive building block. Yeah, I like it though. I really think with this story, I don't know the other guys' stories, of course, from Sweden, but with this story, when I hear it now and I would be a judge, you would be my number one in Sweden. So you're definitely going to Amsterdam then because the finals are in Amsterdam. So you're definitely going to visit my world. Hey. Hey man, how did that feel when they announced that it was in Amsterdam? Did you feel like, damn it, I, I, don't, yes. I, don't, get to, I don't get to, I don't get to travel? Really? I was like, I was thinking maybe going to a far country, you know, travel. But that we also, it's also, it's also a little bit of home turf. Yeah. Like Spanish, you know, and we're going to Puerto Rico, so that's hey, also. When, when are you going? February. We all go together, right? We all go together, and I heard we're going on a boat, and we're gonna have fun, and we're going to Bacardi Land. Oh hell yeah! You okay. Know, you didn't ask. This was the first thing I asked because for, I was like Bacardi Legacy. What do we win? <laughs> <laughs> and then they said, "Oh, you're going to Puerto Rico." I was like, "I'm in. I'm going. To, yeah." Who are you? That, that's that's what Sandra was asking me like from day one when when I made top eight she's like right what do you win I'm like oh I don't, I don't really know she's like find out what do you win like what, all this time that you're investing what is it I'm like well, I don't really know, <laughs> you know? I, don't mind, I, I don't mind if we didn't go to Puerto Rico but it's like it's amazing though right I mean I only have two stamps in my passport this got to be the third I mean, hey, 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 you got to get out more then. I know, but I always go in Europe and I always work. So that's shitty, yo. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But yeah, Puerto Rico is going to be amazing. And I think uh, a piece of advice that I got uh, from our, our, our ambassador was you have to treat this like a business trip. You know, oh, uh, you know not in terms of like don't have fun. Like, of course, like have, have a world of fun. But uh, if you go out there, you get super drunk. You make oh, an, you, you know, you make an ass of yourself. You know, you, you've got you've got the Bacardi guys there. You've got the Bacardi family there, uh, and that's what my ambassador was was really preaching to us. He's like, "Go and have an amazing time, uh, but don't forget that you're still part of a competition, and you have to think of it like an episode of of uh, Island Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> like, d don't don't make a fool out of yourself because if you go to Amsterdam, they're gonna look at you and like, oh, you're that one dude that tattooed his forehead." <laughs> Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, of course, but it's also a little bit of fun, right? Because I'm working on, the, I'm working in the gym. I'm working on a Puerto Rico booty. I, I, I only said, you know, I said, look, I don't mind what we're doing, but I want to wear a bikini. It's the most important part. If I cannot wear a bikini, I'm not going. I'm not going. I want to wear. I went. I, I heard I was top three. I was like, gym. Let's go do some squats. Let's go. <laughs> Puerto Rico, yes. So, so we, we, we can mark that down as our fourth piece of advice. Yeah. Get, your, get your summer body ready. You want some good pictures, right? You with the Bacardi family? Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, come on. Hey, dude, like, it, it's an amazing prize like, to, yeah. go all, to go all the way over to Puerto Rico. And uh, and I, I had no idea that, that I thought we were just going with Finland. No, aren't you going with? When are you going then? We're going twenty first to twenty fourth of February. Oh no, shit! Really? Yeah. I just got a text. It's from. I'll go from seventeen. Oh man! I thought it was all together. Oh, they screwed me over big time. Oh, I got my hopes up. I thought to myself, damn. Like if we, if none of us make it to Amsterdam, then uh, that could have been a time for us to all party together. Yeah. Oh no, we go from 17 till 20. Maybe I should ask them. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my brand ambassador. I've got like the most amazing brand ambassador ever. She's like so laid back. She help I just text her and she she's like, I said, look, I'm stressed. What do I do? He's like, calm down. Nothing's going on. 
which is really cool. That's all. So I think another thing to to tell people as well is, you know, have a good relationship with your brand ambassador. Yeah. Because they're not there to make your life hard. They're the very opposite. And, and you should use them. You, you know, you, sh you shouldn't feel you shouldn't feel ashamed to use your brand ambassador and to ask them a million questions. I mean, just like you with you, with your ambassador, I'm constantly, yeah. you know, I'm constantly bugging my, my guy. I, I'm hitting him up. I'm like, hey, Jimmy, dude, do you have any events in Stockholm? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, my ears to the ground. I'm like, hey, Jimmy, man, I haven't heard from you in two days. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like what, what, what are we doing here? You know, can, can I can I borrow the Bacardi office and have a have a family party in there? He's like, oh yes. Hey, Jimmy, you know, like, how, how am I going to get around these uh, alcohol laws in Sweden? It's like, oh, I don't, I don't know, man. Let, let me look into it. Yeah. But he tries, you know, and that's the thing with with my ambassador as well. I texted her yesterday because yesterday they had like a big Bacardi Christmas party. And I was like, why am, am I not invited? And I, I texted, I was like, I could use a drink. I'm also Bacardi now, so why am I not invited? And then she doesn't even respond because I know that she is partying as well. But then I texted her today, uh, what time are we going to meet? And she's like, bang, 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 responding, responding, responding. Yeah, man. Have a good relationship with your brand ambassador, with the brand and with your support system. That's the biggest advice I can give anyone who does competition, not only legacy, because I know that uh, World Class is also a really big competition as well. I didn't compete, but I heard you compete. And it's also, yeah, I don't think you have the marketing though, right? With the World Class? Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it isn't. You know, it, that, that's what makes legacy so unique. Yeah. Uh, you know, th this whole marketing thing, and uh, and it, it's super. It's super enjoyable, actually, because you know you you have to expend your your mental capacity and your creativity outside of the bar and outside of a glass. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I live in a black market where you can't advertise booze, and I'm, I'm trying to find interesting ways in doing it. And I had this really, you know, I think to myself, okay, radical thinking, radical thinking, radical thinking. I'm like, okay, what, what's radical? Hmm, I've got, I've got a thousand euros. I'm like, well, I could buy a really cheap car. I could get a bunch of artists to spray paint it uh, with cubists all over it, and I can drive it down Europe with my family. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's cool. you know, like that's quite radical. Yeah. And I spoke to my uh, uh, to my ambassador. He's like, "Don't do that." But it's cool though. <laughs> if you had more money, you could do that. Yeah, but, but that's what I mean. Like, I had this idea. I was laying in bed. And I had this idea. I texted him. I'm like, "Jimmy, I want to buy a car. You know, I want I want to spray paint it, and then I, I want to go on a road trip." And he's like, "No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I like Jimmy." Yeah, he's the uh, he's the angel on my shoulder that tells me, yeah, that's radical. That's a little bit too radical. Like, yeah, you, like, you can go too far. Yeah, he's like, we, we were, Jimmy, I want to jump out of a plane. <laughs> it's like, no. don't do that. <laughs> it's a, I think it's really good ideas though. <laughs> if you had the money, I put all I put a lot of money in um in, in uh, also the gas ship, of course, the plane and the stay. And also, I also I've got lucky because I've got a really good sponsor, who's he sponsored my T-shirts and he sponsored my uh, flyers, my stickers, my pins. You know, did, but, you, who's your sponsor? How did you get a how did you get a sponsorship deal with them? Uh, my sponsor is the Fabulous Shaker Boys. It's a cocktail catering business in Amsterdam. Um, it's like almost all the biggest cocktail bartenders in Amsterdam used to work there as well, and. I've been working for them for uh, like for a few months, like four months right now, and I didn't know, I didn't think he was gonna do it. So I was just talking, you know, do I've got ideas? I need sponsors. And then the owner walks in, who I see like once every two months, and he said, "You need sponsor for what?" And I said, "Bacardi Legacy." And he said, "What is it?" So I explained it to him. He's like, "What do you need?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> Amazing, man. Shout out to that guy. That's awesome. Yeah. So that was like, if you put my businesses on the on the thing, so I've got like the businesses on the on the bottom of the flyer and stuff, 
and also on the back of your t-shirts then i will sponsor you for this amount of money and but for them it's also good sponsoring right because they Absolutely. go the road. and also with this telling about it as well so yeah and i also have the sponsor of my fair jus. So that uh, I went to a fashion company, uh, Betis Wijn Domain, and um, I wrote an article about using fashion in cocktails and as a bartender, how to use fashion, and also about my drink with a picture and stuff like that. And then they're gonna post it on their website and then I'm, they're gonna print a sticker on the bottle with a link with my logo on it. And it's gonna be on every bottle that's gonna be sold in the next two months. Perfect. So it's a lot of exposure. And I went on TV as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was it? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was fun though. But they cut they cut out a lot. So yeah. I was talking about competitions and stuff, and they cut it out. I was like, <laughs> yeah, they just they just want you to just shake the drink, monkey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but still, I was on TV for one whole minute, and I made the drink, and I called the name, and so. That's perfect, man. Hey, congratulations, Ray. I'm, I'm so I'm so proud of you, man. That's awesome. Thank you. I was so happy when that happened. I was nervous. I was like shaking. You know when you have the competition and your jigger is like going like this? But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, now, but now you're doing it in front of millions of people. Yeah. And yeah, and I got a lot of texts. Like people were like snapping me and Instagramming me, like, oh my god, you're now famous. Can I have your autograph? And I was like, good, really. You're not famous. And that's perfect, Ray, man. I'm, I'm stoked for you, dude. You're killing it. Thank you. Well, with your story, I'm getting nervous. I'm not going to lie. I hope, really yeah. hope to see you at Globals. But first, let us win the in national, yeah, nationals. And, man, you know, do you have any more guest ships coming up at all? Anywhere in, in, uh, in Europe? Uh, in Europe, I'm, go I'm going to Cyprus the 9th of January at Lost and Found uh, Drinkery with uh, a couple of other bartenders as well from Macari Legacy. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, and I really wanted to go to Barcelona as well, but I have to check it out with money as well because, you know, we all have to work, have to pay rent. Yeah. And, uh, but I've got a lot of guest ships in the Netherlands and um, I got a guy from uh, Finland as well coming uh, the 23rd of January to Fedjoya hosting a night for his Macari Legacy drink. So, Wait, which, which, which guy is it? Oh my god, I forgot his name. I hope he's not watching because he's gonna hate me. Wait, I think it was Ruby. Oh, Matthias. Yes. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a cool dude. We were talking about he because he's also focusing on art as well. Uh, so I hit him up about oof, two months ago and I told him, hey, let's do an event together. Uh, but he's he's been on this uh, Finnish road trip uh, for the last couple of last couple of weeks. Ooh. But but uh, hey, man! If you uh, if you hear of anything, if you want me to to be a part of anything, and let me let me know. I'm ha happy to travel you down. Or or is it not is it not possible for you? What was that? Do you want you do you want to do a guest ship, or is it not possible for you? Yeah, to yeah absolutely, man. Absolutely. If you want to do a guest ship, you're welcome. Um, just tell me when you want to come, and I will discuss it with my bar manager. He's really cool, so he's like, dude, let's go. You can do it both. You can do it like that. He does two hours that day, and then you do two hours or something, and then we can all party at the end, go out, and then I will ask the other Bacardi finalists from the Netherlands, and then we can have a party. Boop, boop. Hey, hey, yeah, let's do it, man. Let's uh, yeah. let's stay in contact in, uh, on the Instagram. And yeah, let's, yeah. Let, let's let's organize something, man, because yeah. I think, you know, I, I think as uh, as competitors, we, we need to be able to, you know, to take advantage of of all these situations and the fact that that you know. The, the company's been so generous to give us a, a thousand euro. Yeah, you know, and we, and we should use that in in the best possible way, you know, to have to have a little bit of fun and and, and some exposure and, and get to meet new people and and socialize as well. I like I like the idea. I like it. I like it. Let's Perfect, talk about man. Instagram more more further on. Maybe we can organize a little event. I'm gonna talk with my brand ambassador as well. Maybe we can uh, have some fun. Maybe a, a, a like maybe let a video make of all all our drinks together. I like it. Oh my god, I got a good idea. Okay, let's do it, man. <laughs> I, I really have to go now because yeah. I still have to go to the city. And yeah, I think you're going to bed because you're a daddy and you're tired. You can see that now. Mm. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. Yeah, I've been much in the way on this. Yeah. <laughs> 
But dude, you know, hey man, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure, and I could I could talk to you for hours, right? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, and no, I'm man. Gonna you for, for sure. And I'm gonna send you some gear. Yeah, please do, man. Please do, and I'll send you down a boomerang as well. That's, nice. that's a beautiful. It's a beautiful shirt. Like it. Um, and hey, dude, let, let's have another hangout uh, a little bit later on as well. True, like it, like it, like it, like it. Okay. Perfect, man. Hey, big love Bye. to you, Ray. <laughs> See you, dude. Bye.